everybody, and uh, welcome back to another exciting episode of Indie Corner Radio. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I'm going to butcher your name so bad. I am so sorry. I am sure you get that a lot, um, but I'm going to I'm gonna try. It's Amber uh, Doy Thorn? Yeah, okay. you got it right. You're like one of the few people who actually gets it right first try, so thank you. Okay, all right. So I'm just like, oh, God, I'm going to say it. I, I actually... I practiced. I went and I listened to other people say it, and some people oh. said it differently. And I'm like, "Oh God!" <laughs> you know. So I get all sorts. I've had doig diog doing. I've, I've just become like a sound effect by this point. <laughs> yeah, uh, doing. You know, like I, I can see exactly. that the being like a problem of, like I'm sure, <laughs> was it always like that in school and stuff too? Yeah, so I think at school it just became Doing for a while. So my surname is Doig Thorn. Doig's from my um, my mum's side of the family and Thorn's from my dad's side of the family. And people just couldn't say Doig Thorn, so I just ended up being Doing. And then it was Doing Doing. I had so many weird nicknames. <laughs> <laughs> so many. <laughs> Come over here and hang out with me, Doing Doing. You know. Oh, Honestly, Lord. I was just like, should I just like bound over there like Tigger? Is that what people are expecting now from my name? I don't know. <laughs> Well, it, it goes well with Winnie the Pooh, even though Tigger's not in this one, you know, um, uh, which was, I think I heard something about that. There was an issue with uh, like the rights or some, some issue or something, but uh, any yeah, so copyright. Yeah. I think he comes out of copyright in 2024. Um, so I think, I know the filmmakers want to do like five Winnie the Pooh films. So I'm guessing Tigger will be in like the third one. <laughs> Well, and why not? You know, you're going to, you, they made enough money on the first one, which they were, I think they, they were really surprised. They were a little bit more surprised about, well, I mean, it was Winnie the Pooh, no matter what it was going to, you know, <laughs> it's going to make money, yeah. you know? Um, but anyway, uh, welcome, welcome, Amber. Um, I'm very happy to to chat with you. Um, so how did you like, you know, cause you're, you're a vlogger, you interview people as well, like me, you uh, act. Um, do you write? I do, yes. Yeah. So I had my first writing commission with BBC Three a few years ago for um, a comedy short as part of their like laugh lessons, which oh, was nice. really cool. So I have technically a writing commission, but I feel like I don't, I haven't earned the title of writer yet. I think I need to write a few more official things first, but I do enjoy writing. No, no, no. Um, I've been told you're a writer if you say you're a writer. You know, like once you start actually doing something, yeah then you're a writer because like I, I hear that all the time that like oh i need to have this amount of money professionally speaking maybe you know professional writer but like you're if you write anything you're a writer this is true i like this i like your way of thinking <laughs> no problem um so yeah so and you've interviewed some amazing guests and i'm sure you get that all the time like oh my god how you know how how awesome like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Keanu freaking Reeves. I mean, oh, he was one of my favorites. He was such a sweetheart. Like I just think he's such a pure human being. And honestly, he was probably my favorite interview just because he's like a hero of mine. Like I love doing my own stunts and doing a lot of like firearms training and screen combat training. And I feel like he is the perfect example of an actor who wants to be fully immersed in the character. You know, he tries to do his own stunts. He got like a black belt in karate or whatever it is. Like the amount of training he did for John Wick was insane. It's like, as an actor, I'm like, that's so inspirational. Like I aspire to be at his level one day. I think he's amazing. And he also seems like the most calmest dude. Like you ever Very seen, true. I mean, I see all these interviews with me, even in the one he did with you, he was just like, so just waiting for the answer. And then just, Oh yeah, I know. You know, right? And I'm like, dude, how? I don't know, man. I I'm anxious all the time, so I kind of always have that vibe, you know. But like, he just I don't know no, what he does. He must do a lot of meditation or something. I don't know what he's doing, but it's working because I've never seen him anything other than being like cool as a cucumber. <laughs> That's what I want to know, but I don't think he's going to give anybody his secrets, you know, like in an you know, interview. If I interview him again, I'm going to have to ask him that question. And I'll just say, look, Mr. Reeves, I'm not leaving until we know your secret. You got to tell me. So <laughs> wait for He'll tell you in the calmest way possible, you know, or something. That's insane. Like, 
Look, Amber, you just got to enjoy life, you know. I feel like that will be his answer. There's no big secret. He's just a chill guy. Yeah, and, and like, you never hear any scandals coming from him. You never hear any bad things. Like, nobody's ever said, oh, man, Keanu Reeves had, like, because everybody has bad days, right? Yeah. Like, you would think Man's by now, bad. you know, mm -hmm. does he not have a bad day? <laughs> or does he just not, like, so. we can't see it publicly, I guess. <laughs> maybe he hides that away at home but i don't know he just i think there's a few people who just seem like genuinely amazing humans and he seems like one of them like, i've seen so many photos of him like riding the subway in new york to get to work and like saying every film that he's on like he'll take a pay cut so that like a female co-star can get paid more i just think it's really nice like not many people do that so now now do you like i mean you know when you when you look at somebody like them you say you aspire to be like him but do you feel like yourself, do you have a lot of those qualities? I would like to think so. I think we would all like to think so. Um, I've grown up with two very caring parents. Like my dad is, to me, like the perfect example of what I want to be. He's just so caring. Like he always puts everyone ahead of himself. And he's just like the nicest human being I've ever met in my entire life. So whenever i have to like make a decision or something i think like what would my dad do um and i just try to be more like him that sounds so cringy <laughs> wwdd what would my dad do, what would my dad do? <laughs> you're gonna say that nice <laughs> um so yeah i no, i love that though um because well i mean having like a strong family vibe and do you, i i saw like a tiktok because you you know uh you do tiktoks as well and you've been doing them for years i guess um probably since the pandemic i would guess right that's when yeah i started literally just before the pandemic which is crazy because then everything just like blew up overnight which was awesome because oh, everybody was home and they're like oh scroll through tiktoks and like, i have nothing else to do who's this amber oh okay you know and then you know and then all of a sudden out of nowhere you get like so many so many hits <laughs> and um <laughs> do you have any secrets to that like to your success with tiktok so the thing is that I've been doing social media videos since I graduated from uni at the end of 2016. Um, and it was never anything that I planned to do. In my last six months at uni, I just started making like funny comedy videos and one thing led to another. They went really viral. And then in the space of a year, I had grown to about a million followers on Facebook. Um, now I'm sitting on around 3 million combined followers. And that's mostly from like my comedy sketches, film interviews, film set visits. Um, I think my key piece of advice is to be persistent. Like now I spend so much of my time acting that I can't really post as much as I used to. But I think the trap that a lot of people fall into is they'll post one really good video, which might perform really well and get a lot of views. And then they think they can just leave it. But if that's the thing, you should like kind of stay on that road, you know, stay on that wave and try and post as much as you can. That's the one thing that I've noticed between people who really seem to be taking off and people who have like a bit of a slower trajectory when it comes to followers and views. That's a good that's a good point. Um I I notice like a lot of people talking about how you need to post at least like three to five videos a day, you know, which sounds like a lot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um but that's like, like when you start out because like that's how you get attention you know yeah. is your videos so if you put like you know put out the feelers to like you know 10 videos and something maybe one of them will will do really well and then the other ones will at least get some notice and and get you followers mm -hmm. um i i've been noticing that the more i more content i put up per day i do get more like people replying to it or something you know uh, which is good, um, but it's also a little bit like scary when you have multiple platforms and and stuff. How There's do a you... lot to do. It's, right. This is how... the thing. It's like a full time job. <laughs> yeah. How do you do it? Like, uh, do you have a social media manager now? So I used to have a manager pretty much from day one. Um, I was really lucky, and I had a manager for a couple of years, and then I realized. I worked better by myself. Uh, there were some dodgy dealings going on in the background that I wasn't too comfortable with. And I thought, nope, I need to take control. Um, and I've been self-represented uh, since then, but I'm like a perfectionist. So I think for me that works quite well because I can kind of see everything that's going on. And some of my family members are in law and I have quite good legal understanding. So for contracts and stuff, my previous manager just wouldn't read contracts. He just signed them, which was a big issue for me. No, that's not so, what any manager does. Like a manager is literally uh, supposed to look over the contracts, you know? Yeah, like he was a lovely chap, don't get me wrong. Um, and we had like a great few years working together, but 
yeah when it got to that point i was like i'm pretty sure you should be reading these contracts this isn't good um but i don't think you need to have a manager to be honest anymore i think um like a few years ago you kind of had to but now i think it's become so common for people to be creators or influencers um that you can definitely do it by yourself like i am and i'm i'm doing okay do you like that term influencer no, hence why I did this. I prefer content creator, digital producer, vlogger, but I know some people are like, what's a digital producer? So I'm like, oh, influencer, but you'll never see it without this. <laughs> well, because yeah, that's what people term. understand, I guess. It's the it's the term now. Yeah, who says that? Like, what do you do for a living? Oh, I influence people. No, I'm just like, I create content. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Because like, I mean, you know, I don't know. I would, you know, some of the stuff that people post might influence people. You know, there are people who do have like these like TED Talk type, you know, TikToks and stuff. And that's wonderful. However, not everybody, everybody's like that. Everybody's like a content creator creating stuff, just, you know, short little videos and stuff. Um, and now TikTok is like more than like 10 minutes or something, if I'm correct. Yeah, so they've changed it up to 10 minutes. So originally it was like 15, 30 second, one minute, three minute, and now it's 10 minutes. So it's kind of turning into YouTube in a weird way, which I wasn't expecting. Do you like that? Do you like having more, uh, being able to put more up there? I mean, I can see the appeal, but for me, I'll be posting the same length. So I always try to get my videos to under a minute. I think for me, I go to different platforms for different things. So if I wanted a longer, like a video longer than 10 minutes, I'd go to YouTube. If I wanted something super short, I'd either look at Instagram Reels or TikTok. And then like, I go to Twitter for news, like every platform has a purpose for me. When I saw that TikTok were doing the 10 minute videos, I think kind of like what you touched on for people who are genuinely influencing or like doing something educational or, you know, spreading advice. I think up to 10 minutes is amazing, but for like short form comedy sketches or, anything like that, which requires a script or anything. I think 10 minutes is quite long. It's quite a lot of work. So I'll be intrigued to see if people jump on that with the longer time frame, or if it's going to stay shorter. I genuinely don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to lie. Those ones are like 10 minutes long and like, and they're like, Oh, just wait till the end, you know? And they like, oh, let you know that. Stuff. that. And yeah. then you wait till the end and like nothing really happens or you're just like, really? I, I waited for that. And I'm just it's like, uh, I always skip to the end. And then, you know. Honestly, it's the best thing to do. I've fallen into that trap way too many times at like 2 a.m. in the morning where I think just one more TikTok video, just one more. And then I watch 10 minutes for this amazing ending and there's there's nothing there. It just starts from the beginning. And I'm like, well, I've been sold a lie. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but I guess that's that's the way they, I don't, I don't know because like, does it, does like TikTok pay you by the like at all like are, are there like you know because YouTube you can get paid by different things but I don't know if TikTok you can so I shook my head but actually yes they can pay you so they have um what is it called I know they have creator marketplace which is where you can do like sponsored posts and brand deals um, but then they also have it's kind of like YouTube ad revenue but I think YouTube pays more if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken. Um, like I had a video video last year, which I think got about 40 million views, and I don't think I got paid anything on TikTok. Mm, damn. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love TikTok, though. Like, not saying anything negative against them, but that one surprised me. <laughs> well, you know, what I what I tend to do, and I, I, I like talking to you because you know about this stuff, and I'm still, I'm still learning myself. Like, even though uh, I, I tried to get into TikTok back in the pandemic, and I still didn't understand anything in the beginning and now i think i'm starting to get stuff or whatever but uh like this our interview would be on youtube and be on um podcast so it would be you know both both versions but uh then like little clips and stuff would be on tiktok to kind of just show you you know show people what we're talking about and probably you know tiktok tutorial type things right now will be on tiktok for that because that's awesome um, but aside from that, like, I don't understand anything about this stuff. So I'm always fascinated. And for some reason, my phone heard something. So it started moving. Um, anyway. Um, yeah. So I, I just, I'm always like, you know, interested in like learning about uh, the social media stuff. Cause I still, I, it's still a mystery to me, you know, like, Honestly, I don't get I've it. Been doing 
a long time and I'm still learning because it's constantly changing. Like the algorithm for each platform changes on, if I'm not mistaken, like a monthly basis. So like videos that might do well now might not do well in two months. They might do even better in two years. You never know, which Mm. I think that's kind of exciting, but in a way it does make it more difficult. And I feel like you can never fully understand like a platform or it's not like people always say, you know, what's like the formula to a viral video. And I'm like, there isn't one. Like there is maybe for a specific day and like, today, for example, okay, this is what you can do today, but then tomorrow will be completely different because it just depends what's going on in the world, like the type of trends that people are like jumping onto, what type of content they want to see. It's just, yeah, it changes all the time. (laughs) Do you do any of the trends? Uh, So I used to, oh my goodness, during um, COVID times, I was at home with nothing else to do. I jumped onto all of the TikTok trends. I wrote my parents into doing it. Oh my goodness, we did the TikTok dances. We did the cooking trends. We did everything. I saw a prank you did on the TikTok or whatever. I think you uh, tagged it on your top and it's like you were uh, just started singing and your parents were like, what the hell? Yeah, yeah, it was this Shakira song. I can't remember. I saw someone do it on an escalator and they were going down an escalator in a shopping mall and they like they had their headphones in and the Shakira song started singing and then they just shouted like this one part of the chorus and everyone was like oh my god and I thought I know who'll find this funny I'll do this to my parents and my dad like you've seen the video he literally like jumps out of his skin I don't know how his whole body like lifted off the sofa like that but I really got him that was a good one <laughs> yeah that was I, you the, the look on your face when you realized like you shocked the hell out of them was awesome um, I felt bad, but I was also loving it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, actually, there was the exact same expression I, I saw in that, you know, which which brings me to your acting, too. So um, uh, is that what you like? I'm, I'm guessing you didn't like, you know, uh, kind of want to be a social media influencer or whatever. Like that wasn't your thing. You know, that wasn't originally your idea. You wanted to be an actress and stuff. Yeah. So did you go to school for it? So here's the thing. I've wanted to be an actor since I was a child. Um, When I was at school, you know, I do plays, musicals, pantomimes, because I love comedy. And I think from being very, very young, I knew that was like my main passion and that's what I wanted to do with my life. But growing up, I was an only child and my parents are self-employed and I'm quite independent. And I realized very quickly that the acting industry is very difficult and the likelihood of me making it is quite slim. So even as like, I think I was 17 when I made this decision, I was quite young. I remember sitting down and like writing all of these like different career options as a backup. And I was like, I need a backup just in case. Uh, Settled on theoretical physics because I'm a massive science nerd and I love maths and physics. So that's what I studied at university. I got a bachelor's degree in theoretical physics. And then after that, I started to do short courses. So I did uh, three months at RADA, which is this amazing acting school, um, a month at Beverly Hills Playhouse in Los Angeles. And then I've been keeping up to date, like regularly training since then. So I haven't done like the standard route of the three year drama school just because I wanted to have that like plan B um, Mm -hmm. just in case. But yeah, for as long as I can remember, I've always known that I've wanted to do acting. And I know that's such a cliche answer, but I feel like if you love something, you know that's what you're meant to do. You'll like do anything to chase it. And that's what I kind of feel like with acting. You know, it's funny because like when I was a kid, that's what I wanted. And then I got yeah. older and I started really feeling like more toward writing and everything, but still like acting, you know, and everything. But it was more writing and directing and other things like that that got me hooked. So I, I get it. Like when you sort of when you find that passion, though, like, you know, as when you're you're young, you feel that passion, you shouldn't. And I always tell people, like, don't quit, you know, because like, I mean, it's it's, you know, if you really love it, if you don't love it and you don't want to do it anymore, don't do it because, you know, this is not this is not for you then. Exactly. But I think that's the thing. And I've had so many people say that, like people saying they want to give up and don't get me wrong. I've had many occasions where I've wanted to give up and I thought, okay, this, cause in the, like in the filmmaking industry, generally just any creative industry, there's a lot of no's, there's more rejections than there are yeses, you know, and it's tough and you have to have really thick skin. And the amount of interviews that I've seen on like Jonathan Ross or Graham Norton with big A-list actors who've said the exact same thing that they were at a point in their career where they thought they were just going to give up because they were fed of the fed up of the rejections. But normally that's the point where that golden opportunity comes along that changes their life. And, you know, it's their breakthrough role or their first leading role in a feature film, whatever it may be. Um, but I think everyone goes through that. And just like you said, like, I think that's the key thing. Just 
if you know that's what your passion is and that's what you want to do, just keep doing it and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Well, I think more people should understand that, like, because, I mean, once again, from a director's point of view, uh, like, you could be up for a role, right? And you could be, you could give your best performance, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you could be, like, the most amazing character. You could be in it. And, you know, I, I, as the director, might see somebody else just do something a little bit more for what I want. And then be like, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to go with that person. And it could be your best day. You think, I got that role. And you didn't. Mm-hmm. And then you're upset. But then that next role, you know, you could totally get that, you know, that was perfect. But it's it's not, it, it's nothing against, you, you know, the actor. And the actor's yeah. got to realize that. But a lot of times when you're, you know, you're faced with a lot of no's, you know, they think it's, you know, because of that. Mm -hmm. I think when I started out, I kind of fell into that trap and I would take the nose really personally. And then I watched an interview with, I can't remember who it was, but it was a really famous casting director. And someone said to them, you know, is it silly question, but is it down to talent, the people that you cast, or is it, do you sometimes look for other things? And this casting director was like, obviously talent plays a huge part, but they were like, for example, once they had this film that they were casting and they said the director was sat next to them and there were two actors that were basically of equal talent. One, let's say A was slightly better than B, but no joke, the director said that person B had a nose that reminded them of their brother. So person B got cast because the director was like, I like that quality. Every time I see him, it's gonna remind me of my brother. And he said that to the casting director and they cast that person, even though they admitted they were slightly less talented. And then I've heard other stories where people have been cast because they had hair like slightly closer to the color of a character. If for example, it's from like a an adaptation of a book or a video game, even though hair dye exists, this one never gets to me. I always find it strange. But I think once I realized that actually sometimes it's not even down to your talent, it could be down to the fact that you're an inch too short or you know, your eyebrows are the wrong shape or your eyes are the wrong color. Like I think the majority of the time it's actually probably down to maybe something completely out of your control. Obviously talent plays a big, big role, of course, but I think accepting that maybe, I don't know, half of the time, it's not actually anything to do with you and it's completely out of your control. To me, that made me way more comfortable with the rejections. And now if I get a no, I don't think, oh, my acting was bad. I think, oh, okay, maybe I wasn't talented enough, but maybe I'm just, my hair's too dark, you know, (laughs) something silly like that. Yeah, well, no, you hit it on the uh, nail because, like, you know, it. it the thing is, like, uh, I was listening to, I think it was Danielle Harris, um, the actress Danielle Harris, was being interviewed by Rob Zombie, you know, or whatever. And one of the things she said was that uh, she hates doing, like, in-person uh, auditions because they look, all of a sudden, they look right to her height. You know, and they say, no, she's not like they'll instantly say she's not right for the role because of her height, you know, and she's like, I can wear lifts. I can, you know, you can angle it differently. It doesn't matter. But like instant they see her as a shorter, you know, as as uh, short as she is or whatever, they automatically think that. And that's why she'd prefer like video, you know, uh, auditions. And, for, up, like, this framing, and then you can't see the height and you're just basing it on the talent. Yep. Exactly. And so, I mean, is is that what you prefer? Or do you like in person? Uh, to be honest, I feel like you can make a better connection in person um, from the in-person auditions that I've had. I enjoy them more than a self-tape because I like having that. You can bounce the energy off the reader and having the casting director there to give you feedback on the spot. I really like that. Um, but I do really like self-tapes as well. I think like doing more self tapes is really great because it's made it so accessible for people because I live in central London. So for me to go to an audition in central London, it probably cost me like four pounds or something, but the amount of actors that don't live in London that have to like take a day off work and take a train into the city. And then it's like a hundred pounds for an audition. I remember before COVID thinking this is like a really, really expensive career just to even try and get a role. So like, I'm very grateful for self tapes because I feel like I said, it's made it more accessible, but energy wise i think it's nice of being in the room just like i said for the reason of making better connections but that, that's just me i know some people prefer like one or the other yeah well also i see that you're like also you you live part-time i guess in la you know so do you do like do you do stuff out there as well 
So I've never lived there. It's just one of those places that I've been to. When I was younger, I'd go every year with my parents. We'd spend at least two weeks, if not four weeks there a year. And then when I moved to London, I started trying to do the same and visiting different areas. And I think apart from London and York, where I'm from originally, like Los Angeles is probably my happy place. Like that's where I feel most comfortable and like most relaxed. And I just like being there because I feel like it's the same with London and New York as well. There's so many creative people there. And I feel like as a creative person, you can literally sense it in the air. And I feel like there's just so much possibilities and especially the weather. The weather out there is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's actually, that's yeah, I, li- I lived there for a year and four months or whatever. And when I was living, COVID, like I lived there, I moved in 2020 thinking it was going to be the best year of my life oh, and january oh of 2020 you know everything was great every you know i was getting things i was getting booked on yeah. things things were great and then march hit and everything okay. shut down and i was just like okay things are gonna be the same you know after that you know that sucks yeah i think that's the thing with covid it just caught everyone off guard but that must have been even more difficult if you're in like living in a different country wow well, and, yeah, I'm definitely. I'm. De- I felt like a different country because I. Because uh, and I love the freaking. Um, you know, I loved the freaking weather. Like that was it. Like when I first like moved there, I was like, I I didn't get cold. I didn't you know nothing, nothing like that. Even if it was cold, I didn't get like allergy issues and stuff. You know, so That's I don't because, know. Because like LA cold is still like England like summer, <laughs> right? Um, it's so nice i never need a jacket or anything like over here we'll be wearing six or seven layers and like hats and scarves and over there you can just walk around in like a t-shirt and shorts it's great (laughs) even in winter that's nice man i've never actually i've never been to london or england and i'm eventually i mean obviously it's on my bucket list you know places to go i uh you know my parents have like brit box you know and stuff so yeah watch, nice <laughs> yeah watch a lot of your a lot, a lot of shows from there and stuff so it's nice it's nice to um sort of see that you know kind of thing What's like your favorite british tv show that you've seen on britbox it's gonna it's gonna be so cliche honestly but i'm gonna say well i know i don't know if it was on britbox but i think it was on britbox but spaced um oh, i really like nice. that show yeah and i also I like you Black- love island <laughs> which one I thought you were going to say Love Island. This is what everyone says. It's like a reality TV show, but oh, everyone's I don't like, obsessed with I, it. I don't like reality TV shows much. No, me neither. You know? I, I, I like that. Uh, I don't know if it's... I know... I like Midsummer Murders, but I don't know if that's... Is that England or is that somewhere else? I'm not sure. I know of it, but I've not seen it. But I feel like it's... I want to say UK somewhere. It's UK. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like that. I like uh, freaking... Uh, black books i don't know if you've ever seen that you know so utterly ridiculous so i i like that (laughs) kind of stuff you know that but it see the reason i said it seems cliche is because it's you know spaced is so american now because of uh you know uh simon Pegg and uh you know um yeah so it's just so 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 american but it's funny and i liked it so um i'm sure you were a big fan of their their work yeah i was gonna say i got to interview simon a few years ago a couple of times for one of the mission impossible films and he's like one of my childhood heroes because i love the cornetto trilogy you know i think Mm -hmm. him and ed wright like the perfect pair and Shaun of the dead is like one of my all-time favorite films so interviewing him was like a dream come true but yeah simon Pegg and nick frost i think anything they touch is just gold especially because like they have that stereotypical british sense of humor which i love and they just like bounce off each other so well and i just know anything that has like either or both of the names attached i know that i'm gonna love it exactly um and that's the funny thing is like um you know that the cornetto trilogy which originally i guess it wasn't like i don't think they were planning that it just kind of happened yeah. but like that just oh that got me Shaun of the dead just i don't like zombie movies and i only like zombie comedies you know so oh, well that is like a zombie comedy to be fair. right so yeah. i absolutely love that movie and uh you know that's that's the thing so if you can make his well i do like night of the living dead but that's a that's a different reason for it um just because it's just the movie that started it all you know respect for it um but anyway what what's like a dream role for you to play 
Oh, so someone asked me this the other day. So now I, I know because it took me a while to think about it. I can't say one, but I've narrowed it down to three. So can I give you my top three? Yes, please do. <laughs> right. So the first one would be Tomb Raider. Just because I used to play the games when they were like super pixelated on PlayStation 1. And I love the films with Angelina Jolie and then the remake with Alicia Vikander. And I think she's just such a strong female role who's like just taken kind of out of her life and put in these like near life death experiences and just handles it really well. Um, and I've done a lot of like firearms and combat training and I love doing my own stunts. And I think Tomb Raider is such a strong character that I just think she'd be so much fun to play. Um, and alongside that, wonder woman because i'm obsessed with superheroes whether it's marvel or dc i'm like she is my favorite superhero by far um and then otherwise snow white you know i've just got to get across all these genres here i've got the cartoon disney princesses i've got the superheroes i've got the action stars <laughs> but snow white was my favorite character growing up like whenever we had a book day at school or like a dress up as your favorite movie day i was always snow white and i just had one outfit i must have worn the outfit way too many times each year like i don't know why i never wanted to dress as anything else i just had this obsession with snow white <laughs> has has the producers of winnie the pooh done snow white yet i wonder no but i know that she's in public domain because all of the brothers grim um fairy tale characters are in public domain so like little red riding hood rose red snow white rapunzel cinderella um i know someone's doing cinderella at the moment as like a low budget retelling but i don't think it's horror i think it's drama um, but no, the guy's doing this film. I think they're doing Peter Pan and Bambi. But I've not saw heard Peter Pan. About it. I was like a horror Peter Pan. Like, yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to do that. I'm so intrigued. I, I'm intrigued too, but I'm like, uh, I feel like we're stretching it now. It's like we're trying to make horror everything, you know. And it's, I love the horror genre. I, I you know, I sort of grew up loving it and and everything. And I, I make my own horror films, but. I like, you know, I don't know. After a while, I'm like, you're, you're, you're killing me. Like they, the same producer, Scott Jeffrey, um, obviously, you know, very well, but he made like uh, the Jack and Jill and, and all these pedo. Yeah. Things. I just, yeah. I've seen all of those. <laughs> like, it's just silly. It's Humpty Dumpty was a doll, you know, or whatever. Yeah. You know. I remember seeing the poster for Humpty Dumpty. And I think that's before I'd worked with them. And I was like, what is this? And I was so intrigued and I still never seen it, but I just remember seeing the poster being like, I have no words. Like this is a new type of filmmaking I've not come across before. <laughs> I was kind of bummed though. Cause like a doll, a doll seems like a little bit of a, you know, kind of scapegoat kind of thing. Like you could just freaking make a big Humpty Dumpty character. Like they yeah, I mean, like if we can make like a six foot tall human sized poo bear, I'm pretty sure they can make like a big Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> Which I was surprised. Like, Pooh and Piglet, Piglet especially. I mean, good God, that's that was scary in a way. Like he was yeah, probably imagine being chased through them, like through a forest by them at nighttime. That was terrifying. I didn't well, even need to act. Like as Amber, I was scared. I'm like, this is a weird scenario to be in. Like, what if this is not a real film? What if <laughs> these people are really trying to kill me as Piglet, and they're just using the film as a way to, you know, that, <laughs> that that, that, that's actually terrifying to think. <laughs> What? I was just going to say, someone said that to me before. I'm like, that's such a good concept for a film. Think about it. If you're like, there's a film within a film and like there's a cast shooting a horror film, but then it turns out that like one of the villains is actually not part of the cast and it's just a serial killer taking people out one by one. I think that would make an awesome film. I would watch that. Wasn't that, I think that might've been Urban Legends. Like one of the Urban Legends, like the final cut, they might've done that where they Maybe kind it. of were okay. making a far, Urban this. Legends movie. It's like... <laughs> Back in that time period, it was all meta and everything. So, yeah, I think they did do that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they they continue to do something like that. And that almost becomes its own little subgenre of horror films, as uh, movies, you know, killers killing people in movies and stuff. You know, in the movies, yeah. you know, that they're making. But too. yeah, because like you're shooting the movie, the person goes, you know, oh my god, what a knife! And then the person actually stabs them. You know, and then no one so, knows if they're acting because they're like, oh, they're saying the lines that are in the script because they're like, oh, my God, help me. But they actually mean, oh, my God, help me. I'm dying. But you'd never know. Like, what a great actor. That, that's an Oscar performing, you know, performance right there. Let's, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just think it'd have to be like a horror comedy, but I just think that'd be so funny. Yeah, that would be hilarious. I think that after a while. Yeah, you should make that. That should be one of your. 
<laughs> one of your projects. Honestly, I'm so tempted. I've had that idea for the longest time. So, okay, trust me. One day I will make it. I'll make this okay. promise now. Just I really want to. <laughs> you all heard it here first. <laughs> you know, she's going to make that movie. Um, But did you like the horror genre? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm obsessed with horror films. Like, growing up, I think other kids would, like, go for ice cream cream with their parents and go to a theme park and like my mum would be taking me to the cinema to watch Saw like I just grew up with horror films and my parents love the horror genre and so do I and that's one of the reasons why when I started acting I kind of fell into horror films I've done maybe like 24 25 British horror feature films now um and it's I think because it's one of my favorite genres to watch it's also one of my favorite genres to act in and you just have so much fun on horror sets because you're just putting the most like insane scenarios and acting is always meant to be like grounded in reality but there's so many weird situations that you just can't imagine like being tied up and tortured by a piglet it's all crazy stuff that i feel like you couldn't really see in any of the genre apart from horror and that's why i like it so much because there's so many films that are just so far pushed out from reality but they just make it so much more entertaining to watch did you have to audition for winning the pill so I applied, but I'd actually worked with um, the producers before on two of the films. Uh, one of the films was just like a day role. And then I had one of the lead roles in another film. So they'd seen me act for like two weeks. Um, so I applied and then I was offered the role based off my performance in the other film, which is always nice when that happens. I feel like that happens quite rarely, but when it does, it feels like a blessing because it's like taking like one step out of the ladder to get up there, you know? Right, you don't have to audition again. You know exactly because it's the same people which it, it makes sense i get it well yeah especially like i don't audition a lot because i don't i don't like to i usually think of people that i want to work with already and then i have mm -hmm. them in mind or if i can't get them i have other people in mind that you know could also play the role and and stuff so i i'd prefer that but you know sometimes i've done audition you know i've had auditions for people and some of them will blow you blow your mind because you're just like oh my god what the, what the hell you know exactly yeah. that's the thing i think it's like finding those undiscovered gems like i remember reading about the star wars one of the star wars films like five or six years ago and that's when they discovered john boyega and daisy ridley it was literally an open casting call of like thousands of people and the first stage was just walking past the casting directors and then it was like in costume and then it was like talking and then eventually it was acting but like from that open casting call now those two actors are doing so well mm -hmm. and like obviously there were small bits here and there before but it was that open casting call that really made their break so i think auditioning is awesome like i think recently most of the work that i've done has probably been like you say through people that i've worked with before you know word of mouth working with the same people again but i feel like especially to get your start in the industry auditions are like the best way forward Okay, so I have a couple more random questions, and then okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to let you go because I know you're you're a very busy woman, and uh, no worries. you know. But uh, first, random question is, uh, uh, okay, do you have any food allergies, or do you have anything specific you like to eat on set? Oh, so I am technically lactose intolerant, but I like to ignore that because my favorite food is cheese. So that doesn't end well. But on set, I normally like to have what well, I'm obsessed with Coca-Cola. I have about three to four liters a day. So wherever I go, I always have like a little can of Coca-Cola with my metal straw. So you can hear me like clanking around <laughs> with my little tin in my straw. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What, what can, so just regular Coke or do you have a flavor? Oh, it has to be the full sugar, full fat Coke. I've tried the diet one. I've tried the Coke Zero. It's not the same. I have to add sugar cubes and it still doesn't taste sugary enough. It has to be like the original OG Coca-Cola. I'm, I'm a cherry Coke kind of guy, weirdly enough. Like, I don't know. I just for some reason I started drinking that and then all of a sudden I just can not stop. So I'll have, you know, regular Coke if, if I have to or vanilla Coke or whatever. But cherry the Coke, Coke is, is like a top tier. Yeah, yeah that, that's it right there. Um. So, uh, was it, uh, all right. Do you make your bed like almost every day? I, okay. I'm a bit weird. So I have a sheet and then instead of like a duvet, I really like sleeping with a blanket. So I have a fluffy blanket. So I, I pick the blanket up and I shake it and that's the bed made. It makes life a lot easier. <laughs> but do you, does, so it has to be made though? Like, are you very. But it doesn't have to be like there's days where it's not made, but then sometimes at like 4 PM, I'll go into my room and be like, oh. Maybe I should move that. And then I just go, wee, and then it's done. And like, <laughs> That's all not like yeah. Literally, it's just like, woo and then it's done. Um, <laughs> when I was younger and I lived at my parents' house, because now I kind of live by myself, 
but when I was growing up, my parents always made me make my bed every single day. So I think as soon as I moved to London and I was living by myself, like out of protest, I was like, I'm not making my bed every day, but then I've kind of fallen back into old habits now. So it'll be like one day, yes, one day, no. <laughs> Well, great. I love that. Um, so, all right. Um, uh, are you a morning person, a night owl or both? Oh no, I am not a morning person. I am a night owl. Like my ideal day would be waking up at like 4 PM and going to bed at like 8 AM. Like I, I had a roommate that did that. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, my body clock is the reverse to like the entire planet. And it's so annoying that like, I know, um, this is how I figured out like my body clock was a bit messed up. So I did this test ages ago and it was like figuring out your circadian rhythm because there's like you say morning types, night types in the middle. Um, and it was saying like, if you had to take an exam where you were really using your brain, what time of the day do you think that you're like most on it when it comes to like intelligence? And I was like, oh, like 3 a.m. <laughs> Apparently that's not normal. Most people are like 10 a.m. midday. And I'm like in the middle of the night. That's when my brain's working hardest. <laughs> um, actually, I would say midnight for me. You know, oh, that that's when I like to write, you know, because I like because I go to bed about three. So, yeah. you know, but I, I would prefer midnight. So, yeah, I I, I feel you on that. You know, um, I, I can't wake up at four. I just feel like the problem with waking up at four is like everything's already done by then, yeah. you know. So, like, I might have missed out on like things that are going out because I woke up late you know, and everything. So I'm sure you feel the same way sometimes if you, you know, I do. Out. I think with horror films, I'm just so used to doing night shoots now where you will start at like 4 p.m. And then sometimes you won't finish till like 8, 9, 10. And I think most people don't like night shoots, but I love it because I'm like, this is my ideal daily schedule. Like these timings are perfect. <laughs> and then when I do a day shoot and it's like waking up at five and then you finish filming at seven, that's like the opposite to what my body wants to do. So I think this is another reason why I like horror films so much because they're normally filmed at night, which is perfect. Yeah. Well, there you go. So night shoots that's interesting i don't yeah usually people don't don't like night shoots because uh, they want they already get up like some people i know uh in the town that i live in everybody's like oh i'm in bed by eight i'm like oh my goodness a.m or p.m p.m you know 8 a.m is when i'm waking up if it, if not nine you know like uh mm. but anyway uh what's your biggest pet peeve that's the last uh random question Ooh, pet peeve. When people click at waiters, oh, it drives me crazy. If I go to a restaurant and someone's like, garçon, they're like clicking at the waiters. You know how some people just, I think, I try not to judge people, but if I go to a restaurant with someone and they're really rude to like waiting staff or service staff, that's how I can judge if someone's like a good egg or a bad egg. And the clicking, oh, that does it for me. It it, it drives me crazy. <laughs> I mean, has that happened on a date? It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the guy was, was just like... I think I just have like PTSD from this one time when someone was doing it. And you know, there's some people who are just quite posh. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just like a culture thing. Like they have waiters at home and that's what they do. But then I was like, no, there's not really any excuse for like manners. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I, I, yeah. I couldn't excuse somebody for being an asshole for, you know. Oh, see, that's the thing. I tried to make excuses. I was like, I'll be a nice person. I'll give them a second chance. But it was just a constant click, click, click. And I was like, nope, that's not for me. So wait, you gave him a second chance? Well, I was hungry, so I stayed for the whole meal. <laughs> in a I'm not gonna like take my well, starter I mean, and go. I like oh no, I wasn't expecting. I'm saying, I'm saying, like you didn't go on a second date with the person oh, and then no. see it again, and then you're like, oh, good god, no, well, you stayed so for the you meal, which of course I'm yeah. not gonna leave before dessert. Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, like I, you, you're gonna order more now. You know, you're gonna exactly. be like, exactly, you're well, an asshole. You know? <laughs> you know, you are you're paying for my meal right now um well thank you amber this is awesome really appreciate it um i i love chatting with you and once again uh by the time this is out winnie the pooh blood and honey should be available on blu-ray dvd i believe you know it's coming out like april um 14th or something i think is when it's i saw around 14, 15, yeah yeah so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited people are going to be able to see that that haven't had the chance to and i'm hoping hoping it's on like a streaming channel streaming platform um you know uh but uh thank you so much and uh is there uh how, how can people reach you if they uh like to contact you 
So luckily, because I create content on the social media, I'm on all of the social media platforms. So if you want to find me on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, you name it, I am on it. Um, and it's just my full name. I'm not very imaginative. So some people have really cool usernames. But for me, it's just my full name, which is Amber Doigthorn. And I try to respond to all messages. So if you have any questions about the film, just fire them my way and I'll try and respond. <laughs> have you gotten a lot of questions? Yes, so many. It's like half questions and half just people getting really excited at the fact that I have like a kind of standoff with Piglet. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you like, go. Oh. Like you can you can say that. Like you can put that on your resume, you know, and everything. I, I killed Piglet. You know, take take that one out of the box. Who else can say that? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you you took him down, man. He was he was, he was a beast too, man. He was. Wow. Uh, I I just love that they were talking about how scary. And I was like, this is Piglet. <laughs> like, yep. what? <laughs> like, he's... I know. I never in a million years would have thought that Piglet could be scary. But then when I saw the mask and the costume, I was like, oh, I get it. I get yep. it. That's terrifying. It was, he was terrifying. So there you go. Well, thank you so much. And uh, everybody else, go check out uh, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Check out Amber's stuff. I mean, you've got a YouTube channel, I believe, too, if I'm correct, as well. And uh, TikToks, everything. So you're doing you're doing amazing stuff. And once again, if you see Keanu Reeves, ask him why he's he's so calm. I, I want to know what his secret well, is. I will ask just for you, Jonathan. <laughs> okay, thank you. You don't have to mention my name, but I do want to know. So you're going to have to send the information to me, for sure. This is fine. But no, it was such a pleasure talking to you. That was such a fun interview. I love those like random questions at the end i like lift for interviews like this <laughs> i love doing that too because like after a while and i was trying to think of some because you know we don't know each other personally so i have no idea like any of these things you know sort of thing yeah. and i don't know what to ask you exactly except obviously winnie the poop stuff um but i was just like you know what random like these and i'm gonna i'm gonna try to do them for more you know more and more interviews because they are kind of fun like people don't have a clue what you're gonna be asking you know <laughs> i try to do the same thing when i do interviews because i think so many people just ask like the very standard questions like why did you want to get involved in the project tell us about your character what was your favorite moment from filming and like, i've experienced that now being on the other side like being the interviewee so many interviews like I get asked the same question and after a while like obviously you have an opinion and you have an answer and I try to change my answers a little bit but they all kind of sound the same so when you get these like fun questions it's so nice and it kind of throws you off but in a good way because you can just relax and be like oh like, I love getting a new question I get so excited when I hear a new question <laughs> never been asked that before huh <laughs> well, you did get asked uh, before about your, you know, the your dream role, which is a, you know, I did. Role. But I think that's a really good question, though. I like that question because I get to talk about roles that I'm pat about, which I'd love to play. And I'm like, this is an opportunity to talk about my favorite characters, so I'm not complaining. Okay. Okay. Good. Um, well, everybody, check her out and see all the amazing stuff she's doing. Thank you, Amber, and uh, thank you guys for checking this out. Until two weeks from now, uh, we'll be back. Until then. Bye.